up next, we are going to have amazing ladies to discuss diversity. So I'll start calling the group, so the director of Endeavor Miami, Laura Maiden, the chief of breast surgery, Miami Center Institute, Dr. Jane Mendes, the vice president of information technology of FedEx Express, Latin America and the Caribbean, Karen Standardi, um, office managing partner of Ernest Young, Camila Code, and the co-founder and general partner of Venture City, Laura Bullrich, who is going to moderate. Oh, Clara. Clara. Clara Bullrich, that is going to moderate the panel. Thank you, ladies. Oh, my God. I know. Hi, everyone. Oh, we have a full house. Good. OK, so we're going to be talking about um, creating innovation within and embracing diversity. And um, so my name is Clara Bullrich, and I would like to start by saying that um, <clears throat> Innovation is about creation, and I am a firm believer that we have the power to create anything we want to. As an innovator, I think that uh, one of the most amazing things is that we have a unique story and a set of professional and personal experiences that define who we are. So I was raised in Argentina. I came to the United States 22 years ago. I started my first company 17 years ago. Um, uh, in the financial industry, uh, a multifamily office called Guggenheim Partners Latin America. And out of my passion for technology and innovation, um, I co-founded the Venture City a year and a half ago. And uh, I have my own vision of the world and my own way of tackling problems that is different from my peers. So I believe that diverse teams are more creative and multiple voices lead to new ideas and um, new products and new services and encourage us to think out of the box. So uh, today my, show, my job is to showcase these four powerhouses that we have here. They are four brilliant minds from four different industries and they will share with us um, their experiences about diversity and innovation. So without further ado, let's introduce them. Uh, so, I know um, Adriana uh, named them, but I would like for them to share with the audience who they are. So we'll start with Karen. Thank you. Uh, my name is Karen Standardi. I'm the Vice President of IT for FedEx Express, responsible for the Latin America Caribbean Division. Um, I'm born and raised in Buffalo, New York, so my journey here in Miami has been about a year and a half, and I like to say that I've got, come from the snow to the sand. <laughs> wow. That's a good one, huh? Yeah. Hi, good morning everyone. Camila Cote, uh, soy Colombo Americana. Uh, have been in Miami most of my life. I've been with EY for 24 years, which is amazing that it's been that long. In that journey, I've visited over 20 countries around the globe, lived in three different cities, and very happy to be back in Miami. Um, I'm a mom to Felipe, who's seven, and I bleed orange and green. Mm -hmm. Can you explain a little bit what orange and green is, mm -hmm. please? I, it took me two minutes to figure that out. That's what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Laura. Hello, I'm Laura. I grew up in Mexico. I came to the U.S. in 98 to study uh, my MBA, and then I stayed. I've lived in different cities. Um, I've been in Miami for the last uh, more than you know, 15 years now, which is amazing. And my background is uh, diverse. I started in private equity, then I did M&A and investor relations for a publicly traded company. That's what brought me to Miami, and one of my mentors brought me to Miami, and then I never left. Um, I also worked for Visa uh, in different capacities, and then I had the amazing opportunity to really help drive the entrepreneurial ecosystem here in Miami through Endeavor Miami. And I was super excited about that. I always said that my selfish drive is um, that I'm doing something for my daughters so that they have more interesting things to do as they grow up. And Valeria is here, so I'm very happy that she's able to see that. <laughs> Dr. Jane. Uh, good morning, everybody. Buenos dias. Uh, my name is uh, Jane, and I'm actually a breast surgeon. I was um, in the Northeast for the past 34 years, grew up in Puerto Rico, and uh, they imported me here to Miami. Uh, 14 months ago to work at the Miami Cancer Institute. 
So I'm happy to be here mm. and uh, I just take care of people with technology and kindness. So I'm happy to be here. So we do have so we do have two new Miami lovers, which is good. <laughs> it's exciting. So, um, so I'm going to start with two quotes. Um, the first one is going to be for Karen. And um, your, the FedEx CIO, Rob Carter, has been quoted saying, people won't respect us for our traditions. They will respect us for our innovation. I understand that during your 30 years at FedEx, that viewpoint means a lot of things at different moments. So would you like to share how this impact it impacted your career? Sure, yes. First, uh, thank you for inviting me to be a part of this esteemed panel of women leaders. Uh, innovation is in our DNA at FedEx. Our CEO and chairman, Fred Smith, uh, had a quote that said, the information about the package is just as important as the package itself. And that truly inspired innovation at FedEx from the first PC-based automated shipping uh, system to a new sensorware, a powerful device that can track near real-time uh, shipment data. Um, Never-ending innovation at FedEx. You have to be innovative when you're delivering 10 million packages a day. Thank you. OK, good, good. So my second quote is for Camila. <laughs> this is a long one, so please bear with me. And the title is long, actually. Um, Ernest & Young's America's Advisory Innovation and Alliance Leader, David Nichols, has said that the essence of an organization's purpose is its culture, and the heart of the organization's culture are its people. The best way to innovate is to become a continuous learning organization and foster a culture of innovation that is truly ingrained in the organization's DNA. Can you share with us how this culture really uh, make you thrive within uh, EI, EY? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you know, it, it, I like that quote because I think I can relate it to my own personal story as well as I think the journey that our firm has been on. So I mentioned at the beginning I've been with EY for 24 years. I'm an auditor by trade, a CPA. And one of the great things about professional services, I think, is the apprenticeship model. And we're learning every single year. I mean, today, 24 years later, I still learn something new every day in what I do. And part of that is because of the great people that we work with. And, and it's this teaching principle that's ingrained from the very beginning when you start the firm. If I reflect as to what I did 24 years ago as a staff accountant, I did a lot of clerical stuff. I added on a calculator, not necessarily a laptop. I used a laptop as a word processor, but that was about it. So I think it's, an, it's amazing to see the journey 24 years later. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have an email address. Mm. And the world has changed dramatically in the last 24 years, at least from my perspective, in, in joining the workforce to where we are today. And I, I know that growth is going to continue and continue exponentially. So I think it is a culture like ours that fosters innovation because it really allows you to bring the best you to the table. And I think that's what's so exciting to be here at eMERGE and, and see all of the innovation and the ideas that you can apply, not just to whatever you're doing, but I can learn from and we can be better client servers as a result. If I think of the firm and how EY has grown. When I joined Ernst & Young, um, and now we call it EY, yeah. <laughs> we went through a branding thing, more global. Um, we were more modern. More modern, that's right. It's a fancy little logo. Um, it, it was really more an audit and tax firm. And for many of you in the audience, when you think of EY, that's probably what you think of if you had even heard of us. I think today, we're much more than that. We're a consulting firm. We're a transaction firm. We're, we're really a business advisor. And to me, what makes it so exciting to be part of the firm today is that innovation. So for example, I described what I did as a staff accountant, right? Our staff accountants don't do that anymore because those clerical tasks are done by robots. Yeah. And that's pretty amazing. We built set over 700 bots that we use in our internal practices. So for example, we used to have to send an a accounts receivable confirmation that was a very clerical task. Now a robot does it. And when we started doing that and showing our staff, we actually held a competition. And a lot of those 700 bots that we have today are from ideas that came from our over 200,000 employees across the globe. So I think that culture of innovation and that culture of being part of the solution is what makes 
living today and being in today's workforce very exciting. And it's really very important because if you disrupt yourself and you're ahead of the game, you're able to understand you know, that you need to have a competitive advantage. Absolutely, and you know? I think it's done great things for our profession because I think the, the stigma of being you know, a yeah. boring accountant hopefully is not there anymore, and it's changed because we do get it an opportunity. still a little bit, But you right? haven't gotten to know me very well. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but I, I think it is a lot more exciting what we do yeah. now. We, we do yeah. get to, I think, use yeah. our, our, our skills a lot better than doing those clerical tasks that are now done by bots. Yeah. Exciting. Thank you, Thank you Amina. So um, we'll go to Laura. And um, so I understand that Endeavor's mission is to uh, select, mentor, and help and accelerate in a way those you know, best you know, high-impact um, high entrepreneurs, right? So I understand that you have seen already 400 companies and uh, you reached, like, you're re really right now on 19th, right, that are working within right. the Endeavor. Mm -hmm. So you must be an expert on identifying, <laughs> I'm sorry, hyper-growth companies. So, so can you tell us a little bit about yeah, that? No, I think talking about uh, innovation, I think one of the things that is key for innovation innovation is collaboration and being able to embrace the diversity of ideas and thoughts from people with different experiences. At the core, Endeavor selection process brings that, right? So while I would love to get the credit of the selecting the 19 companies, actually the selection process is very thorough. It includes a series of opinions from our mentors. It includes a local panel to finish the process in Miami in this case. And then all our entrepreneurs are presented at an international panel where we have people from different parts of the world with different experience and it can be very seasoned entrepreneurs, business leaders or investors, right? So I actually think that that diversity, if the entrepreneur is able to uh, demonstrate that they're at the point of scale and have, that they think big, yeah. That's, that's how they become Endeavor entrepreneurs. So I, I really uh, appreciate the process. I think something else that I want to say about, you know, 400 companies, uh, you know, up to last year where our selection process is ongoing. And this is our fifth year of operation, so that's why it has been many. Um, but we only select a few, right? And we're really trying to identify mm. which companies with our, um, you know, limited resources can really have a delta. We can really have an impact in those companies to really drive the entrepreneurial ecosystem. I get the benefit to see uh, ecosystems around the world and they is present in you know, more than 29 countries around the world and Miami is, was the first, or is still, the first U.S. affiliate. Now there's expansion in the U.S. in what we call underserved markets. And I think there's something very special about Miami that I hope that we continue to nurture and foster, which is diversity, right? So I think diversity is you know, natural in our ecosystem. If you look at our portfolio, it's very diverse in different ways, right? From you know, countries to you know, gender to uh, different uh, uh, and industries. industries and ethnicities as well, right? We're industry agnostic as well. So I think that that's something that we, as we collaborate in this ecosystem and we all work together to foster innovation, uh, diversity is uh, something that we can uh, continue to grow and that will differentiate Miami. And we also need, you know, I think one, one thing that we would need to include, to work on is inclusion. But uh, I think that will help Miami be a very different. Uh, what would you mean by inclusion, really? Well, I mean, diversity does not necessarily mean that you're including everybody, okay. you know, in the community, right? So, you know, um, I have the benefit to collaborate of collaborating with different entrepreneurs here in Miami and different organizations, and I know it's in different, you know, in all our minds to also be inclusive, right? To make sure that everybody in the population is is able to participate in the growth of the of the economy in different ways. Not everybody has to be an entrepreneur. Uh, it's cer certainly exciting, it's exciting to be around them. Uh, it's also hard, but entrepreneurs also need amazing people to work with them, right? And there are uh, um, different ways to participate in that growth as well. So how long is the process of selection? It, it takes, it really varies by the entrepreneur's readiness and the company's readiness, but it can take from you know, six months to up to a year if the company is not ready. And so our uh, entrepreneurs are really uh, vested in the process. And uh, we treat selection as a service as well. That's where we think that the entrepreneurs, by meeting our mentors and different 
perspectives, get the feedback, and start thinking bigger than they already think. Uh, but uh, it is worth it, and we're always looking for entrepreneurs. It's rolling. So if you know amazing entrepreneurs, please reach Send out to us. us. Yeah. So how long is uh, how long would they stay with uh, Endeavor? Uh, it's a it's a good question. Actually, um, we would hope that an Endeavor entrepreneur stays for life, that we can help them through the different stages. And as they become successful, they come to the other side of the table. So, you know, in a village where Endeavor has uh, been there, been present longer, like, you know, more than 20 years, uh, Endeavor turned 20 years last year. Chile was the first one, and now Argentina, and, you know, Latin, Latin America has a big presence. It's, it started there. Uh, we see that now the Endeavor entrepreneurs, obviously, are mentors, are part of the, the board, they give back. We do foster a paid forward mentality. It's all about the entrepreneur's mindset to give back to their community, so that's very important to us. So we hope they, they stay with us. And another distinction too is that in our selection, we uh, look for companies that are at the point of scale. So sometimes uh, people, uh, you know, uh, get confused with the term accel that we help them accelerate their growth. We're not a traditional accelerator in that sense. We look for companies that are past the start of phase. So we really are making sure that we can uh, help them, you know, grow as fast as they can. Yeah. Good. Thank, you. Thank you. So now we have Dr. Jane, which I'm really amazed. I was going to call her Dr. Uh, Mendes, but she wants to be called Dr. Jane, so I'm really up for it. And um, so for Breast health is a very important topic for all of us here at the panel, and I guess for many of us in the audience as well. So um, would you be able to share some of your examples or even personal anecdotes of how innovation changed since you first started? Yes, well, as you know, healthcare is really important for everybody, and obviously we cannot achieve all these accomplishments in terms of innovation if you don't have your health, both physical and mental. So I've been very blessed to be in this industry and help people accomplish all their innovation through their health. So when it comes to a breast care itself, I was sharing with the panel earlier that over the past 27 years, it's been critical to see how innovation has been key in order to improve what we can offer to the patients and also improve that experience. So I was recruited a year uh, ago to the Miami Cancer Institute, where we're trying to provide all that excellent care with the latest innovation here in South Florida, completely revitalizing healthcare here in South Florida with cancer experts, clinical research, as well as genomics. That has become such an important component of who we are as individuals on our health. You know, being able to know if you have a genetic predisposition that you can help prevent further disease or you can arm yourself with options of what you can you do as an individual so that you can really accomplish your utmost health knowing what you have in your genetic makeup. So that has really been an innovation over the past. It's been an explosion of genomics. And we are at the forefront of that here in, um, at Miami Cancer Institute. So without innovation, we cannot lead to the next level. So I think in health, you know, with the challenging the dogma, not only are we maximizing better cures, but also we're improving quality of life. You know, so because yes, we can do certain treatments, but it is utmost importance to the, the quality of life for that individual so that they can continue to do whatever they meant to do in their life. So I think that it's keeping that happy medium between achieving health so that we can excel in that innovation but keep what we can offer for the patients. So Thank you very much. So in terms of Miami as a city, yes. is it really upfront in terms of other cities? And how do you, what is your idea Yeah, I think uh, healthcare here in Miami is very interesting. I came from the Northeast and for I had been for the past 34 years, and it's very different to see, you know, Miami is really a melting pot. Mm -hmm. There's many different cultures, and with that, different expectations when it comes to health, and different traditions in terms of healthcare. By that I mean, you know, oftentimes if it doesn't hurt, why go to the doctor, right? Yeah. So prevention is not really part of our fabric necessarily, so it's changing that mindset so we can be proactive about our health rather than be ill and then do something about it. So I think in that respect, Miami is really growing. It's a very diverse community, 
And with that, you know, the attraction of all that technology as well as innovation to healthcare that has really led to where we are today with incredible outcomes and resources. You know, we have the latest technology at our institute. Uh, every single gadget that from radiation oncology, genomics as I already alluded to, and beyond that is the human touch. Because though you can have a beautiful building with the latest technology, if you don't have the human bond, and that respect for the individual. The each of us bring our own story, like each company brings their own story, each of us brings our own story. Yeah. And it's accepting that story and then see what we can do for that individual at a difficult time, and then how we can really maximize what we can offer with the technological advances. So it's a no-brainer. Yeah. So I think we are really at the forefront here in Miami when That's it good. comes to healthcare. That's good. Yes. So we're in a good place here. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Good health. Okay, good. Yes. So um, I would like to talk a little bit about diversity, and I'll start with, um, I'll start with Camila. And um, EY is well known for recognizing innovation. I know they have been having um, an award for 30 years for the Entrepreneurship of the Year, Entrepreneur right? Entrepreneur of the Year. Entrepreneur of the Year. And they also have had, for the past 10 years, the Entrepreneurial Winning Women program. That's right. Can you tell us a little bit more about that program? I think that's, that's something that would be super interesting for other women to understand and, and maybe join you. Absolutely, I hope so. Mm -hmm. um, so that's actually one of the things that I've been involved with most of my career, and it's one of my favorite things about our firm. Um, as Clara mentioned, over 30 years ago, we launched Entrepreneur of the Year, and what that was was a celebration of entrepreneurs, and it started in, in Minneapolis, and it really was a program that we run, but we don't judge, if you will. We have folks that are entrepreneurs apply into the program and tell their story to us and to our sponsors that participate, and then an independent panel of judges selects winners in regional programs throughout the country to celebrate their accomplishments within their industry. And it really has been a tremendous program in celebrating entrepreneurship and helping these companies get to the next level. But one of the things we realized in the program was that for many programs in many years, there were very few women. Mm. Very few women in the program that were applying, either they didn't know about it or frankly, they weren't at that level yet to be able to compete with the other companies that were applying. So we created a program called Entrepreneurial Winning Women that women who, and I'm gonna read it to make sure I get it right, um, women that have started their own business either by themselves or with a co-founder, they need to have been in business um, for less than 10 years, they need to have achieved, less than 10 years but more than two years, they need to have mm -hmm. achieved revenues of at least $2 million, uh, but not more than 30 million, because I think if you're not within that parameter, frankly, you can compete in the bigger program, yeah. if you will. But if you are within those parameters, this program allows the women to, to um, submit their nom nominations. It's a national program. And there's a class of about 10 that is selected every year. And those 10 women are invited to New York City. And the dates for this year are October 4th and 5th. It's a two-day program in New York City, fully paid for, where they're going to have access to investors, advisors, um, mentors that will help them in their business so that they can not just work in their business, they can work on their business, which is different. Mm -hmm. It allows them to reflect and see where they want to take it and hopefully get to that next level. They're also invited to our strategic growth forum, and the dates for that are November 7th through the 11th. And it's important because if you are interested in applying, the expectation is that you go to both. And the Strategic Growth Forum is a, is a conference that we put together in Palm Springs that really brings world-class speakers that are entrepreneurs to celebrate entrepreneurship. And it culminates with the Entrepreneur of the Year Gala, where all of the regional winners from across the country compete at the national level. By industry, we named three finalists that night. And there's an overall winner in each industry as well as an overall U.S. winner and the U.S. winner goes on to compete in a world program that's in Monte Carlo uh, the following June. So it's really a great celebration of entrepreneurship and one that I think helps companies that are starting out get their name out, get their recognition, and frankly recognize their employees. 
For me, this is my second eMERGE conference, and to see the energy in this room and the caliber of the entrepreneurs that, that attend the conference, it's really inspirational. So I hope that if some of you out there are interested in one of our two programs, you visit our booth. It's right behind the stage, booth 706. We have some of our program directors here to talk more about the program. So what would be the ratio between women and men in terms of? That's a good question. I, I don't know the ratio, but I know that it's gotten better. Okay, I good. think the first time I, I participated in the program, I was very young in my career, and there were very few women. Okay. Um, I think last year there was probably in the Florida program like a 30% okay, women, um, but it, it definitely it's can still, be better. Yeah. I we know Laura, Laura was a judge, right? In, 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 still a judge yes, in the awards. Second time judge. Second yeah. time judge. So would you like to add anything to what Camila was saying? No, I mean, the only thing I would add is that, you know, uh, I feel that uh, sometimes uh, women entrepreneurs limit themselves and they can just apply. I mean, you know, just apply, right? I mean, nobody loses anything for applying. It's, it's, it's a hard, hard work and, you know, then interviews. But, um, you know, this year we got very few women, so I, I really think that uh, it's important to just just do it. And it's great that they have the other program, but, um, you know, don't be shy. And, you know, there are different categories. It's an amazing program. Uh, we're very thorough as judges, they, you know, they are very strict. To work, very strict. <laughs> and so I, I really think that um, the resources are there and, and, and people, everybody should take advantage of that to have. And, and it really is a celebration of yeah. entrepreneurship, so. Okay, good. Hopefully after this, Hopefully. we'll have much more, many more women, okay? So, Laura, I wanted to, um, let's stay with you for a second, because, you know, I, I've, I've read the, your latest report um, that cites great points uh, in terms of uh, diversity, both cultural and personality type. Uh -huh. So how did really these, uh, these factors um, help your portfolio companies? Yes, so I think it's, a, it's very interesting. As I, you know, I talked before about diversity in the portfolio companies itself, but now I think it's really great to see our entrepreneurs as they scale be very conscious about the, how they build their teams. Uh, and you know how they foster innovation through diversity, right? And just making sure that they are not only um, thinking about, you know, when we, you talk about diversity, people immediately or sometimes they think about quotas. And it's really not about quotas, it's having the right uh, personalities uh, that fit your culture on one hand, and then the right backgrounds that really add a, a diverse points of view to foster that growth and that innovation, right? So uh, we have in our impact report that you're all welcome uh, to read on our website uh, several examples of what our entrepreneurs are doing specifically. I, you know, I'm gonna pick one, and it's uh, Winko, Juha, and Johanna. You'll get to see Johanna, you know, later today as a speaker as well. Um, they, you know, they have a coding boot camps, right? So, I, you know, they're very conscious about their culture and their team, and you know, as companies scale. Team and culture is very important because when they move from the startup phase to the scale-up phase, right, all of a sudden you start building processes and building other things that were not necessarily as you started. And it doesn't feel that the immediate team might not feel as close as before. And building that, you know, growth with staying true to your values and your culture is something that they're thinking about. But beyond that, right, like they, because they are um, helping, um, Florida to have more developers through their boot camps. They are, you know, they also have uh, and are very conscious about diversity within their students, right? Which is important for uh, the workforce. So they have a scholarship program for women, uh, and that they, they they're trying to grow as well. Uh, and I think that's great, right? Because it doesn't matter, you know. They, so they they're true in both sides. They're how they build their team, but also what they're doing in terms of, you know, the company the company's mission, right? So uh, that's just one example. I think that I'm very happy to see, you know, Every Mundo is another company that, uh, you know, even made the news last year of, for their diverse team. They have very different countries represented in their team. Um, you know, Marcel is also cited in the, in the report on how in terms of culture, he also thinks about how he develops his, com his people, right? And success to him is when his people leave to get a better job, right? So, you know, different ways of thinking uh, about culture, but always fostering innovation so that they don't, 
you know, um, get stuck. And as you say, you know, you said and Camila said, right? Um, this we're seeing a huge change in everything, right? Technology is impacting everything. And, you know, even for brick and mortar companies, which we work with, you know, just being able to challenge your status quo, right, is important to be able to stay ahead of the curve. And you can only do that if you are embrace different points of view, right, yeah. and different backgrounds. So, Completely. and especially now as our world becomes uh, smaller and closer, right, through technology, it's even more relevant, right? We're to globalized embrace, already, yeah. Embrace different opinions, so, yeah. That's good. Karen, um, uh, so FedEx was ranked number 13 in uh, Fortune's um, uh, global research for 2017 yes. for best workplaces for diversity. Yes. Can you share with us successful outcomes that yeah. came from that? Yeah. yeah. FedEx is truly as diverse as the world that, that we serve. Uh, myself and 450,000 employees, we know that FedEx was founded on a, on a people first philosophy. Uh, diversity and inclusion connect people and possibilities to deliver a better future. And proof of that at FedEx, 49% uh, of our US workforce and 28% of our management are minorities. Oh. Supporting diversity and inclusion really is a, yes, it is a smart business practice and it is the right thing to do. Thank you. Good. That's very good. So I know we have two minutes left, but we're not going to finish yet. <laughs> so, um, so Baptist announced in November, I, I'm seeing you, Adriana. <laughs> So Baptist announced in uh, November 2017 that they will be launching an innova innovations institute that will allow in inventors to submit ideas for healthcare advancements. Yes. So that's a super big thing for the South Florida healthcare community. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit more about this project? Absolutely. So under the leadership of Dr. Barry Katzen, uh, this institute came to formation in a partnership with uh, I360 Medical, which is a group uh, from Ireland with the idea that if individuals have a um, novel uh, innovation uh, for uh, healthcare, that they could submit and register their idea. Then the idea goes through an appraisal process. Then it goes from there to really a prototype of the idea if it goes through the appraisal process, ultimately to a startup, and ultimately to be commercialized. So it's going to be gauged on the impact of what the idea might be. You know, as in everything, we need diversity judging that idea. So it's going to include biomedical engineers, individuals in healthcare field, researchers, just to make sure that we really value that idea and compare it equivalent with others that might be submitted. So I think it's a way to foster improvement from within. Uh, and because as we know, with that innovation is that come better care. So is this institute is going to be a great crib to foster that type of uh, submission. So we're really looking forward to this uh, institute and what it brings to South Florida. So what are the dates for this? Uh, is, is there a launch date? No, or? Uh, it's um, individuals can go and submit and register okay. whenever they want. There's a confidentiality agreement okay. that they have to sign up at the time that they register the idea. I think they plan the appraisal process to be at about one month, and there, if it goes through, then it goes through the rest of the process that I described. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. So, of course, the clock is already in red, <laughs> so we are actually gone. So I wanted to thank you all for, for being here with us, and uh, thank you, the audience. I hope you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. Thank you. And um, I would leave you with just one more, you know, last question. Last thing is that um, to embrace innovation, really, we have to be able to disrupt ourselves and to be open to new ideas. So I hope you all enjoy the rest of the day here at Emerge. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you.